Shall we begin? Let's begin now. All right, hi there everybody and welcome. And it's a little bit of a tutorial, a little bit of uh, putting you in the right direction of assembling one of these bases. Now, when I built this particular base here, I built this over four years ago, I just got into modeling and I had a lot of issues with it. Uh, a lot of the issues were probably caused by lack of experience of assembling different bits and pieces. But it sort of tarnished me uh, and it's something I sort of like I've been dissing should I say in my last video saying that these bases are crap well they're, they're not really crap uh, they're pretty good bases to be honest with you and just knowing what to look for as you're going along will make life a lot easier uh, on assembling which I will run through and also I will run through on making up my version of this is track lengths that interlock that you can actually make a uh, full length of track to the length that you want but we'll put that to one side just for a second and we'll take a look at the base and like I say I actually built this base four years ago uh, very inexperienced when I built it had problems with it but the issues I did sort out and I just thought I would explain what to look for as you go along. Closer look at the base, if we bring it up, it is well detailed. You know, the ballast is nice, the rails are nice, the sleepers are good, even the, the joining strips, they look pretty cool. And looking at it now, it is a nice base. But like I say, it had its issues. Now, unfortunately, I haven't actually got any sections that I can actually show you exactly how it all goes together because I've binned all mine because I'm not using them but I will run through and show you that when you get it out, out of the kit it all comes in sections uh, you get them all nicely put at the bottom if I just show you you can see these little joining tabs where you join all the sections together and also it does come supplied with a nice oh, I'm knocking the microphone over there uh, with a nice end cap end you get two of them uh, to make your little base up all together very nice now I'll just give you a few pointers as we go through as I explain to start off with uh, because they're all in sections you're gonna have to join them when you assembling them is to assemble them on a flat surface uh, which just makes it nice and easier to get this edge nice and flush and also is to dry fit them and shuffle them around because where they join these seams uh, the ballast is up or low and you want to try and get them as well almost as level as possible to each other once you've done that you're not going to get these joints absolutely perfect before you glue them uh, you do have to come back with a scalpel and sort of like just chip away and make the seam well almost disappear if I bring that one up I don't know if you can actually see that but we've actually got one there uh, which I didn't really make a very good job of and there's a couple there that stands out which I can see now which now I wouldn't allow to go uh, to be passed if you know what I mean I would have worked a little bit more to get them done gluing them glue it on a uh, assemble them on a flat surface glue them together use uh, a pretty hefty glue something like uh, the Tamiya white top I did use the Tamiya ultra thin well, the extra thin and I didn't really leave it long enough to cure off I left it for about three or four hours come back and I was handling it and I actually broke a couple of the joints which can be frustrating because you've got to re-glue and 
mess about so use a good heavy glue on it to start off with it put it to one side and give it a good day day and a half even two for it to really go off before you start messing about with it when it is dry bring it back and like I say you're gonna have to get your scalpel or your exacto knife and just chip away at the seams just to sort of blend them in uh, to be quite honest I didn't make a bad job of that the next bit is uh, the joints along the front because you're going to have these joints all the way along where they join and I can pick them all out now at the time I thought I was pretty good with the filling and everything else but it does take a bit of sanding a little bit of filling uh, to get them looking nice and once you've got it to that stage then you can go ahead and spray it it's it's great because you don't the sleepers are not in you can get this all sprayed up you can do your uh, lows and highs and get it to look like ballast and it's it does as you can see it comes out reasonably well now the next bit is the sleepers now if I bring one of the screws in this is the sprue that you actually get in the kits it's a standard sprue in all the kits and you get your sleepers, uh, your rails, all your bits and pieces that you need for assembly. Now the sleepers uh, are nicely detailed, there's nothing wrong with them, but they all come joined up. Uh, this is so that you can just push them through the actual base and glue them on here. So you can actually spray them, uh, your wood colour, get that all done before you actually insert them through. So you haven't got no painting to actually do on the sleepers when they're actually on the bed but I'm afraid to say it doesn't really work that way because the issue I found was when you actually come to put the sleeper in and we'll move that along to the end here this is a single sleeper uh, another thing I, I will mention as well it's a very good system for the simple reason is as you can see I've got the end piece here if you bought another kit and you wanted to put uh, say you got the train and you wanted to extend this you can very easily extend it by putting more bases and more track on so it is a good system in one way and a pain in the ass the other but going back to the sleeper now the sleeper's got these little tabs on that they interlock with each other and the idea is that you just push them through these slots if I turn that over and these points here you can actually glue uh, them in and everything's hunky dory but this causes a problem because of these tabs the sleeper sits down I don't know if we can see that the sleeper sits down quite low uh, and the problem is, is when you actually come to insert your track between these three pins, quite a bit of this ballast here is higher than the actual track. So as you're inserting it through, you're having to lift it over a piece and down, and then it causes pressure on these pins, which end up snapping. And there's quite a few on here that I did snap off, which I have to painstakingly glue back on so it causes a bit of a problem as you're going along now there is two ways you can get out of it the first way is as you're inserting it is to try and cut the tops of the ballast off so you can get it through to the next one without having no pressure on it which at the time I suppose I could have done but I went for a different option I'll turn it over what I actually did was I cut them all off individually like this and then I inserted them in to the when I get it in insert them through and brought them level with the surface of the plastic on the inside and glued them in place which resolved the problem because then the actual sleeper sat a lot higher I had enough clearance and I could get all my uh, tracks through with no problems at all and it worked a treat. 
But like I say, it would be totally up to you if you was doing this, if you wanted just to cut them bits off or take these off completely. I still sprayed all mine, uh, all my sleepers on the actual sprue, on the, well, on the joining strips, and then I cut them off. And where the little bits just showed, I just touched them in uh, with a little bit of paint afterwards. But to be quite honest with you, there weren't many that actually sh showed, so it wasn't a real big issue. So, they're just a few things to look out for when you're assembling it, assembling this. Uh, at the end of the day, it's still it's still nice. Uh, I'm afraid to say I got tarnished uh, with the experience at the beginning, and then I decided I was never going to use these bases. And uh, fortunately, I've binned all mine now, so I'm not using them. All right, moving on to my well, the way I'm doing my tracks now. Uh, because I am fixing directly to a diorama base uh, and also I wanted tracks that I could just lay onto a shelf that I can actually just dis display uh, flat tires and trains on without any big hunky base to it. Uh, I sort of come up with this little way, well, a little system but using everything that we get on the sprue from the uh, kit. Now, the idea has been stolen from childhood when I had one of them wind-up trains and in the set you actually got a set of rails and they actually just interlocked together. You made up your train uh, track and you put your little toy on it and it ran round. Now I've sort of pinched that idea by having them so they actually interlock. So one will fit uh, like so. I ain't gonna push them together because they will lock in. So you can actually interlock the track and you can make your track as long or as short as you wish. Now these particular ones are going onto a glass shelf. I don't want no ballast in, in them. They're just going to be strictly for dis display. But I'm also going to do them exactly the same way for my diorama because these will be fixed to the diorama base. And then I'll infill with uh, loose ballast uh, mixed with that. Oh, what's it called now? Deluxe Materials uh, Ballast Magic. So that's how I'm doing my tracks and I will quickly well not quickly but I will run through how I get to that point okay this is a standard sprue that you get in the kits containing everything you need for your uh, line should I say now it contains your sleepers it contains uh, your the actual line as well you get two long ones and two shorter ones. You also get uh, eight joining strips. Now, the joint with the connectors, there's two different types. You've got one with uh, six pins on, and you've got one with uh, six holes to uh, actually accept these pins because they actually go through the rail. And that's what you get. Oh, and also one spare sleeper in case you just need to cut it down or whatever I, I'm never quite sure what that one's for but I will work it out one of these days so the first thing to do is to cut out all your tracks and your joiners so what you end up with is that now I've left all these on the sprue the simple reason is that it makes life easier putting your tracks in because once you take these off the sprue if you can see there's gaps and what happens is as you're trying to feed the track through it buckles it kinks and it's frustrating and you'll find that if you leave them on the sprue you get your track and it will feed through very very 
very very easy right so there we go there's the first one and there is your second one as you can see they went through nice and easy just pushing down where they sat up so that's your first bit now I will take that one back out again but the simple reason is I got it around the wrong way because there is injector mark pins on one side of it and I just face them inside if you really want to go to the extreme of filling them that's totally up to you that is in your court uh, me personally I'm just facing them to the inside because that way they won't be seen uh, when the vehicle is actually on there the trains actually on there so once you've got to that bit it's very easy now you get one of uh, the connectors now the connectors one's got the pins on if the camera's going to focus yeah that one's got a pin on and also it's only got a small cutout section to accept the pin that's on the track and let's see if I can right so and that's the reason why I don't glue anything yet is because I want to get that lined up so when that goes through let's see if I can show you that with the camera focus that will go through now and that's aligned your track so it's an equal amount either end so all we need to do now is glue that I'm going to find some glue let's just uh, take that out uh, we use a bit of the good stuff so what we're going to do is put a little bit of glue in there a little bit in that to gush out there put our connector in like so so we've got our connector in so it's sitting with the pins out now what I'm going to do I've got two lots of these to do so I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to glue all my first uh, connect well first joiners in on all of them right the way through and then I'll come back to you for the next stage now they've got a, a few minutes to dry off now if you get a pair of side cutters and these pins if we cut two of them right off and cut the third one back uh, just to make like a little nipple sand them flat flat I shall show you on this one just sand them nice and flat and then we glue in the second part of the joiner now this joiner you can't go wrong because this has got a space for two and it always goes on the inside so we're just going to glue that on the inside get some glue my big arms weren't in the way then because uh, I wasn't really watching what I was doing I'll put a bit of glue on there and then glue that in place like so So I'm going to get on now and I'm going to glue the rest of them on and then I'll come back to you. Right, uh, I've glued all them bits on, they're all done. The next step is just to get your Tamiya glue and just put a dab on each of the sleepers all the way along. I ain't going to bore you by sitting there and doing that but you get the gist run all the way through on all of them and leave them to dry. Okay, I've been all the way through them. I've glued every sleeper, uh, rail to sleeper, right the way through. Now I'm gonna put them to one side and leave them to dry for a good day. And in great Blue Peter fashion, here's one I did yesterday. I glued all this one yesterday and it's ready now to come out the sprue. And it's very easy now to chop this out of the sprue right 
so. And we have one solid piece of track. Get this one out as well. And there's the second bit. Now, if you're going to put ballast on this, if you're going to put this onto your diorama, you can actually leave them bits in and you can actually use them to glue or fix that down to your actual base. Uh, me, I'm going to be using these on a glass shell for these particular ones. So it's just the matter then of getting your cutters and cutting out these bits at the bottom. Uh, right, so they do need a bit of sanding uh, to finish off with, but nothing too horrific. And that's how you actually assemble them. Now, uh, I've also done a quick step uh, sort of lot for painting because I've got so many of them to do. I'm doing this in a few easy steps. Uh, I'll get set up and I'll run through that with you as well. <coughs> okay, my six steps painting and weathering guide. Uh, first step. We spray all the tracks with a primer. I'm using a Ready Brown uh, primer by Vallejo, surface primer, nothing too excited. exciting. Spray everything back, front, sides, the lot. Uh, then next, when the primer's dry, uh, pick a darkish brown. I know it looks quite light on here, but it is quite dark. A darkish brown I picked out of my paint rack was Vallejo uh, chocolate. I seem to have three or four of these. These come in paint sets and you don't use much of them on the camouflage. So I've actually used that. Uh, I've done no masking. All I've done is sprayed as close as I can get to the rail. I didn't even panic if I've, I've caught the rail because later on uh, it does give it high and lows of like uh, rust tones. So that was step two. Now step three. Step three is I use a wash. I put it straight into the air gun. Um, the particular wash is my go-to is the Vallejo uh, dipping wash. I use oodles of this. They do it in black and brown. Brilliant stuff. You can thin it down or spray it neat straight from the uh, tub. And it works brilliantly. I, li I like it anyway. So I give that a coat over uh, just to sort of bring everything down. And I very, very lightly hit the uh, tracks as well, mainly along the bottom, uh, just to give it that sort of depth. Now, that's three steps. Uh, the fourth step, I'll move a few things around and uh, I will be back with you in a second. Okay, we're back with step four. Now step four is making the rails look like they've been actually used. Now, I'm using a very beat up tube. Of, this is AK uh, True Metal. Uh, have I got a full one? Yeah, we've got a full one there. Look. AK True Metal. Uh, this is steel. Uh, good stuff, I like it. It's like a wax, if you haven't seen it, it's like a wax paste, oil, all you need is a, is a small blob onto your palette, which I've just put on there now, and I just use a cotton wool bud, and look, I've got a bit there, look, all you need to do is put a little bit on the end of your cotton wool bud, work it out, and then just use your cotton wool bud to apply it along the top. Right, so nothing too strenuous. Right the way along. And the nice thing about this stuff is when it's dried, you can actually buff it. And it will come up a lot brighter uh, and really look like metal. So, 
Now I'm going to carry on because I've got a stack of them there to do, but you get the general idea on that. I won't sit here and bore you. And just making sure that you catch the inside edge where the inside of the wheel would uh, run. So I'm going to carry on now. So that's step four. I should be back with you in a second for step five. Okay now, step five. But before I do step five, I am just going to give these rails a little bit of a polish. So there's this AK True Metal. You can actually polish it up and you can polish it up as much as you want or as little. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a sheen all the way through. Nothing uh, too mad as I've got thousands of these damn things to do. So it's just a little bit of a, a sheen. You can, you probably won't see it on the camera because it's only just a sheen. Now, step five is I'm just going to use a rust wash. Try saying that with these teeth. The rust wash I'm going to be using is the Vileo mod and it's a light rust. Now, I do like this because it's not a rust that you put it on you think oh god that's too orangey or you know that's too bright it's just a, a strange just a nice rust now all I'm going to do is it's basically I'm going to run along the bottom of the rail and I don't know what they're called these things that actually hold uh, the rail to the sleeper I shall have to find out unless someone out there very kindly will let me know but it's basically just giving it a little bit of a pool of rust just where I would say the water would come down and on the bottom edge of the rail now I'm going to do that both sides that side as well as this side the same with the other other one and also what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my brush with the rust and just go across that top surface right so just to uh, just knocks it back a little bit it does it does work when it dries off actually I could do it with being a bit heavier It just gives that, uh, how can I explain it? It gives that metal that's been, it's got the surface rust to it and it's, it's just there. You know what I'm on about, but it is. What I'm gonna do when that's all dry, I'm just gonna get a cotton wool bud and I'll very lightly go across the top and take uh, a couple of passes over the top of it. Uh, that will bring the shine bits back through but also it will leave that light rust in different areas and it to me it just makes it look like uh, metal that's been in in the open for a while so I'm going to do that on both sides I've got a stack of them here to do so I'm going to get on and get them done step uh, six now step six is just take it back into the spray booth you can matte coat it you can satin coat it or you can gloss it that decision is up to you uh, whatever you feel uh, is the right thing to do I'm gonna matte all mine I'm just gonna take it back into the spray booth that was step six uh, I shall use the Vallejo matte varnish and I'll give it all a coat of matte just to seal everything in and just to uh, balance any shiny bits up just to make it all the same and that's your my six steps on the weathering nothing too fantastic but they do turn out quite well now I'll get all these done and what I shall do then is I will link a load of them together I shall try and get some photographs because the light in it here isn't really great and it doesn't really show up but I'll try and get some photographs done uh, I'll even put the train on a length of it so you can actually sort of uh, get to see what it actually looks like uh, with a vehicle on top of it so with that note 
I'm going to thank you very much for joining me. I'm hoping it's uh, helped somewhere along the line. Uh, any comments, any questions, leave them in the uh, box below and I shall try my hardest to answer them. Until the next time, thank you very much. This is not a drill. Repeat, this is not a drill.